So this was a test article here that they were testing the GNC to re-enter the atmosphere, fly and land back at the landing pad. As a meter, we should pitch over to vertical and start calculating our hover slam. There we go. We have touchdown. All right, so let's go over uh, the guidance, shall we? The guidance, navigation, and control. The avionics of the rocket. <laughs> this is where we have everything for this vehicle currently in a frozen state um so pretty much we have a, a mission parameters that we set it defines some of the things that we use for mainly orbital class launch vehicles not so much for dcx which is just designed to go up and come back down similar to uh blue origin's new shepherd vehicle um, but we do have a few things in here like uh, target inclination, which I'll actually set to zero because we've updated the uh, uh, azimuth calculation to account for zero now. Uh, target roll altimeter bias is actually wrong because altimeter bias is 71, not 95, but uh, go figure, right? Go figure, chat. We don't have a gravity turn because we're not going orbital. We don't really care about max Q and we're not going to be ma uh, maxing out on our Gs uh, anytime soon with this vehicle. So pretty much this is just to, uh, as a placeholder. Um, we also set up our overall launch vehicle classification with a few other things uh, needed for the rest of the code. Again, typically for an orbital class launch vehicle. And then we finally get our target heading by calculating our desired azimuth. Um, so this function here essentially takes in our desired inclination and our reference frame and transforms that inclination, right, which is with respect to the equator moving up um, to an actual heading that we can use, right, because heading is uh, between 0 and 360, not which is not what inclination is, which starts at 0 at 90. So we have to do a little bit of a transformation to uh, calculate our actual heading for launch. And then we go from there. We activate our engines. We engage our autopilot. And we start with a very, very small pitch over maneuver and we're good to go. We raise our landing gear and this is where we set up our target altitude. And this is the first thing I want to change, chat. This is the first thing I want to change, which is a estimation of our apoapsis. Um, you could say that you can just use the apoapsis that the game gives you, but it doesn't account for things like drag. Um, mainly that it doesn't account for drag, right? So whatever apoapsis that you achieve, you're always gonna have a slightly lower apoapsis depending on how low in the atmosphere you start coasting. Um, so this is something that I wanna fix first. Um, and I think I'm gonna start with that with an integrator and literally integrate the equations of motion to actually propagate forward through a certain amount of time uh, that we call a horizon. Um, and from there, we can uh, hopefully get uh, basically cut our engines when our estimated height is actually at the height that we desire, which in this case is 70,000 meters. Uh, so from there, we set up uh, our controller for our throttle estimation. Um, and then we enter different control modes. The first one is a hover at target altitude. So we coast all the way up to apoapsis and the DCX vehicle currently sits there for a total of 20 seconds. Um, and then after 20 seconds, it will then belly flop. It will rotate over, pitch zero degrees across the horizon, very much like Starship, and start descending back into the atmosphere. Uh, from there, it's very much hands-free until it gets to around 4,000 meters, at which point it pitches over 90 degrees and starts calculating for its hover slam maneuver. Um, and that's pretty much it. Once it's in its hover slam maneuver, once it... Uh, basically achieves its desired stopping point, it will then transfer over into a constant descent rate at negative five meters per second. So a constant rate of descent. 
um, until it touches the ground and then it's done. And then we plot our states that we care about and then there we go. Let's go ahead and launch this and see how it does currently. So we're gonna start off, I think with a target altitude of 30,000 meters. So basically that means that we are going to coast until our targeted um, altitude or actual altitude or apoapsis is essentially hitting a, a target altitude of 30,000 meters, 30 kilometers, at which point we'll coast up to that altitude and go from there. Uh, one thing I wanna change off the bat is change this to three. Perfect. And there we go. So we've passed the 30 kilometer altitude goal and we're still coasting up a little bit more. We've entered uh, state machine one, which is basically control mode number one, which is an altitude hold maneuver. So once we basically hit uh, zero um, vertical velocity, we want to uh, basically cover that. So there we go, not bad. And now we're doing our belly flop maneuver. So here we're pitching over to a five degree pitch angle. So we're slightly pitched up. Uh, this is mainly because again, we don't have any GNC to aim us back to the, to the actual landing, desired landing site. So I pitched the vehicle up a little bit to hopefully nullify some of our forward motion because this thing will create lift, right? We actually do have control surfaces for helping us maneuver in the atmosphere. This does generate body lift um, as we'll start to see once we get into the atmosphere. Um, so yeah, we, we want to make sure that we don't go out into the ocean. So to kind of combat that a little bit, I started to pitch up a little bit and uh, we'll see how it does. So activates the activate the nose RCS here. Still looking good, but you can see that we are uh, you know what I should do? I should actually get our physics out, aero GUI data. We can check, I think, our horizontal velocity here. Can we? Uh, terminal, static. Oh, I definitely thought you could see your horizontal velocity. You can see your climb rate, but not horizontal unless I'm looking at it wrong. All right, so it's trying to keep that five degree pitch, basically keeping us locating uh, or looking right at the horizon here. We're looking good though. And then once we get below 4,000 meters, we should pitch over to vertical and start calculating our hover slam. There we go. And calculating our hover slam maneuver. So we're still coasting. Side slip, yeah, getting some side slip. There we go, hover slam maneuver has started. We could even tune the hover slam a little bit. I'm a little bit conservative, um, basically doing a calculation to make sure we don't use 100% throttle to give us some room for error, right? Um, so you can see it started off at around 75% throttle and is now slowly going up to 100. And then it hits its uh, desired point. And then we have touchdown. Not bad, right? go and pick it up and next time i'll make sure once i have it on the pad i will um quick save so we don't have to do this every time So it's kind of like uh okay
So, uh, to do, uh, we want to add a uh, RK4. Actually, you know what? Probably not an RK4. Let's do an Euler um, based integrator. Um, and we will also add the um, Apoapsis um, uh, Apoapsis target estimator, which is going to use that integrator. Um, we're going to do Euler step. And then that's going to take in our current altitude. We'll call it that H, uh, our velocity and our time step. And an Euler integrator chat is essentially just a multiply by DT, right? It's basically just a simple multiply by your time step to integrate forward in time. It's very uh, linear, simple equations of motion. Um, so we first need to figure out our H. Um, H is going to be equal to V, which is our velocity um, times uh, DT, right? But of course we have to add our H in that as well. And then we also have uh, velocity. Velocity updated is going to be equal um, to our current velocity plus our acceleration times DT. Uh, and of course we're also going to need our acceleration. That's pretty much all it's gonna be. An acceleration, how do I wanna do this? Um, acceleration is essentially just going to be the um, force of thrust minus the force of drag minus the force of gravity, right? Force equals mass times acceleration divided by the vessel dot mass. Yes. And I think I will put in here vessel as well, just so it always knows which one to use. And now we need to calculate our force of thrust, force of drag, and force of gravity. Our force of thrust should just be zero. We're essentially trying to estimate our apoapsis altitude when we're coasting. So yeah, when we're coasting, our force of thrust is gonna be zero. Um, so that should be coasting no thrust. So FT is gonna be zero. We also need our force of drag. And then we also need our force of gravity. Do we actually have in our KRPC the force of gravity here? Um, okay, well in that case, we are just going to, I'm gonna leave that right there and shrink it so I can kinda look at the things we need. So yeah, force of gravity is gonna be vessel.orbit um, dot body dot gravitational parameter, right? Yep, dot gravitational parameter, okay. Um, and then that is gonna to have to be uh, multiplied by vessel dot mass and divided by um, R squared, but R is actually gonna be the equatorial radius, radius plus H. Right? So this should be vessel dot orbit uh, dot radius. And then force of drag, we should be able to get just the force of drag. Uh, so that's going to be numpy dot lin alg dot norm. And then we're going to want numpy array of vessel dot flight dot drag. So ideally, ideally that's it right there. So then that is essentially going to completely erase all of this. <laughs> that is essentially going to completely away, uh, eliminate all of this. Yeah. Uh, needed to define initial height and velocity. Yeah, this is where we'll do that. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. So I don't need this. I don't need this anymore. This, I can just say, um, while true, and we'll just make sure to have break conditions. Uh, I wanna leave the sleep here, I think. Don't need that. Don't really need any of this then. Drag, apoapsis, nope, okay. 
So should not need any of that. Okay. This is where the fun can begin, chat. So we want to uh, predict future apoapsis here. That's what we're going to end up doing. So the first thing we pretty much need to do is get our our H next. Well, I guess we should say our H current. Current, yeah. Uh, and that's going to be when we enter this, right? We're going to be um, getting our our app actual altitude here, and our altitude should be in flight, I think. Mean altitude, the altitude above sea level in meters. That should be the one. So we need vessel dot flight dot mean altitude. Vessel dot flight dot mean altitude. Okay. And then we need our velocity current, which is going to be equal to vessel dot flight dot bell. Uh, is that under flight, by the way? And it returns a tuple. So I think I need to do the same thing we did up here, right? For acceleration. Uh, yes. So that's going to be velocity current, and that is going to be of velocity. So we take the norm of our velocity. That should be hopefully fine. Um, okay, so we have our H current, we have our V current, and now we need to do our time steps. So for some amount of time steps in range of, um, what's our time step going to be? That kind of is the thing that matters. Let's say two minutes, 120 seconds, and we'll have a time step of one second to start. That might not be accurate enough, but, um, you know, we'll see. Um, so now we have H future. Uh, v future is going to be equal to Euler step of H current uh, V current and a DT of one second. So like your integrator, right? The larger you have your step, the more error you introduce into your equations, right? Think about like measurements. If you have to be really, really accurate in, let's say, you know, measuring your car's velocity so that way you can develop a cruise control if you're only measuring your car's velocity like every 10 seconds you have a large room for error right same thing uh here for our integrator step function the larger we make this dt the faster we can make the integration process but the larger the time step involved for trying to propagate forward our future states our future measurements um so it's a careful balance between how fast we want this to iterate and how accurate we actually need it to be. And then we need a, a break statement from this, right? So um, if H future is greater than um, target altitude, we want to essentially um, control our vessel to be, is it just throttle? Vessel, it should be vessel control dot throttle. There it is. Uh, so yeah, vessel control, vessel dot, yeah, vessel dot control dot throttle. Okay. So vessel dot control dot throttle um, equals zero. And then we break and there we go. Yeah. Okay. Let's try it. squared exactly uncle bill uncle bill gets a chat all right let's see 175 so that's pretty slow right that's what i was a little bit worried about that seems to be a bit slow one kilometer at basically two kilometers just that like it's operating at like half the speed here so there's a couple of things that we can do to change that. So yeah, here in range of 120, we're going out to two minutes and I don't think we have to. 
We could probably cut that in almost half, actually. And then we could also increase our step time as well. Potentially. So it does less iterations, but then it becomes more inaccurate. So um, there's always that. We could also potentially get rid of this sleep time because it means that it stops doing an integration process every, uh, what is that? One fifth of a second. So it does it five times a second, but I don't know if that's actually true on the clock speed here. Yeah, see, look at this, 47. We're basically at half, half the altitude. Hmm. And we have our landing burn ignition. Looking good. And there we go. Stop. Easy peasy. Oh, we ran out of fuel. <laughs> hey. Oh, no. Oh, this is fine. We could essentially just use all the same variable. Just so we can avoid the update to simplify it. So V future, V future, and then this should now be V future. Just so we up, we can get rid of the uh, this part here. So I need to check if we go past our app laps. H old is going to be equal to our current H, which is H future, and then we need to say if um, H future is greater than. Uh, sorry, less than H old, then break, right? So how the uh, integrator works like, right, is uh, if we think of this as um, our our altitude versus time, right? So we'll, we'll have this as our H um, versus time. We essentially start, right, and we go up, and then we have our first calculation, right? So this is our initial H uh, and velocity and then what it's doing is it's doing for a thousand time steps an integration a prediction right a prediction of what our future h and v are going to be in a thousand time steps now granted our time step is very small so a thousand of them is not super small but at point one we're doing a hundred seconds so essentially i think what's happening is the prediction is doing this and then it's going down and this is how we're achieving a negative altitude. So what I need to do is see, do this um, comparison here for H future and H old to see if like this point is less than this point. And if it is, then break. Um, Cause we don't want to continue integrating if it's just gonna give us a negative value. I think that is what could potentially be causing an issue here. I'm not sure, but uh, that is an issue I see. So let's just add that check, right? Can you set the integration step amount to the current app WAPS's ETA? Uh, so this is going to be, let's change this to um, vessel dot orbit dot time to app WAPS's divided by DT. Right, and we'll change this to DT. And then outside here, we'll change to DT to actually be a variable. still a little behind but that might be fine because remember it it should be somewhat behind right because it's accounting for drag and gravity it's accounting for drag which the apoapsis on the left there does not account for so it might be okay it's at least not negative right chat Okay, it's starting to get a little bit too far behind now, which is a little worrisome. Because now it's at 12 and we're only at 8. Yeah, now it's really falling behind. Wait a second. 
at H. We actually, yeah, that's actually not correct. That's also an error, right? Because it's taking our current radius, but that's not true. Because it has to account for our altitude. Is our radius changing with our altitude? And this is just getting our instantaneous altitude. Instantaneous altitude. So not our future. So let me actually do something here. So R is going to equal um, vessel.orbit.celestial body, I think is what it has to be. Did I use that somewhere? Oh, it's body. Yeah, orbit.body. Okay, that's what it is. Vessel.orbit.body. So R is going to equal vessel.orbit.body. Um, equatorial radius plus H. That I think is what we need. And then replace this with R. Also, our drag is... No, drag should stay relatively the same. No, it should not. Oh my god, all of our all of our forces are getting our instantaneous forces. All of that our, all of our forces have been wrong. That's why because this is getting our our current drag when we enter the integrator loop and it's not changing our drag with what it should be at altitude. Unbelievable chat. So I actually need to calculate drag here. So here we go. This is what I found chat. I found uh, at least a a actual model of the uh, density. Um, so we're going to, well, this is, um, yeah, altitude versus density, right? So we found this table, and I'm just going to put it into Excel and go from there. Display. All right, we found it. We found a potential model here. Um, so rho is going to equal 1.7185. Um times math uh, actually does numpy give it to me yes it does exponential of negative two um e negative zero four times h ideally that works <laughs> well what's good is we can use this though chat our CD times A is roughly 2.2, 2.3. It kind of fluctuates back and forth depending on our um, uh, angle of attack. So let's look at our CD times S. I'm pretty sure that should be roughly stable. Depending, of course, on the drag cube. And our drag cube changes, right, uh, based on our angle of attack. So three point, we can call it like maybe three, 3.2, CD times A maybe. Yeah, it'll change as the AOA changes, see watch. See, because our drag cube is different, but we're gonna mostly be always going prograde until we belly flop. So I'm okay with, with estimating it at like four or something like that. Because we might not ever be like perfectly prograde, but 3.54 seems decent. I think to we're gonna assume probably 3.2. I think that's a number that I can I can go with for our CD times A. Um, okay, 3.2. Uh, this is gonna be kilograms per meter cubed. There you go. Just had to restart it because reasons. So it's not our current, because it's definitely higher than that. Oh! Well, that looks better. That looks a lot better. I think I, think I didn't have the uh, correct reference frame for the velocity that we were using. I think that's what the problem was. Hey, what's up, Intense? How are you doing? 
Man, I think that was the problem, chat. I wasn't using the correct reference frame for the return on the velocity. It's starting to slow down, though. But it might be okay. It's definitely better. 100% better, yeah. Oh yeah, 100% better, wow. I think I need my surf surface frame. There we go. Oh yeah, look at that chat, and it's now coming down. That's what we want to see. We should overburn by a certain amount, and then it should naturally coast and uh, come down to meet our target apoapsis within a very small margin of error. What's uh, 500 divided by 30,000? That's a 1.6% 1, 1. error, even less than that. I'll take it. All right, let's do that. Let's do 400 divided by 30,000. Yeah, 1.3% error. That's really not bad. I'll take it. So we passed our 30,000 coasting up. And it should enter our hold, our altitude hold. There it goes. And it's trying to bring it down to zero. There we go, tracking zero, altitude hold, and flip maneuver. Perfect.